Hey, it's Joe. I caught Dune Part 2 last night at the Fan First IMAX screening, and I wanted to give you my first watch thoughts, so let's get into it. So I am a pretty big Dune fan. I've read the first four books. I even have a couple of the board games that have come out. And yes, I got the Dune popcorn bucket. So I had very high expectations for this film. And let me preface it by saying that the first one, I think was really good. I would give it a 4.5 out of five. My initial reaction watching the first one actually was I felt that it was better for book readers in general and I thought that non-book readers wouldn't enjoy it and that they like would be almost kind of lost but I was actually surprised at how many like non-book readers actually enjoyed the first one. So I, I had like I said very high expectations for the sequel and i do gotta say that i was slightly disappointed but not enough to like say that the movie is bad or anything i think the movie is still really really good i think this movie is still easily going to be in the top 10 at the end of the year it's just that i was expecting a 10 out of 10 and i didn't get a 10 out of 10. so there were a lot of changes compared to the book this time around enough where I like was mentally noting them whereas in the first one I don't think it was like as much of, of like a like a mental process that I was going through I, it also just the novelty of the new movie coming out it's the first in, the, in a new series but this time around I was like okay that's different and this is different and that's different so I think for non-book readers I think you're actually going to enjoy this one more than the first one and I think one of the main things that across the board people might have an issue with is the pacing. I think that the first act, which is like about 40-ish minutes, 45 minutes, 40 minutes, I think it's a little slow. And it's kind of like the calm before the storm that you have in, in like war movies or movies with like the, that are building up to like grandiose action scenes so this definitely has that like calm before the storm situation going on and i feel like while it's it's world building i feel like it doesn't go all the way having read the book i know like oh they didn't do this they didn't do that so it's like if you're gonna have that calmness um i wanted like it to go full lore like full world building and it kind of just like hints at things and certain characters are completely different like definitely you're if if you haven't read the book i think you're going to enjoy that uh zendaya is definitely more prominent in this film uh i know one of the main complaints of the first film was that she was barely in it and she's just there like in dream sequences um she definitely has a bigger role here and her character is definitely different like she's there almost to make it more obvious what Dune is actually about, which is the the moral of the story is to be afraid of like saviors, like people that, that say that they're like going to save you or anything like that. Um, and that's even why I think the second book was written was because supposedly i guess people didn't understand that that's the message of the first book so the second book even makes it more obvious that that's the real message that it's not just like like a, a trope of like white savior but it's the the messages just saviors in general that you shouldn't trust them and i and in that aspect i feel like they really went into the lore of like the benny gesserit which i really enjoyed um that they're like master manipulators and uh, Charlotte Rampling did a great job. She has some of the best lines in the movie that really make the movie feel grandiose. And it's like, uh, it's like they they deal. Um, I'm trying to remember. She had a really good line in the first one too. And and it's like uh, when she's when she's coming out of out of the after, after having done the test on Paul with the the pain box, um, and she's and she's talking to Jessica. And it's like, oh, our, our plans are measured in, in centuries. Like, it's like, oh, shit. Like, 
um, I think it's it definitely more grandiose and it makes them feel like this like epic organization. Um, and you definitely see more of them here. You get to see how they operate, um, specifically with uh, Leah Sadu playing uh, Lady Margot Fenring. And that part of it is perfect. I love like that part of the world building. You, and you also get to see a lot more of Gaty Prime, which is the Harkonnen planet. And there's actually like a good chunk of the movie where we start the film with with uh, Paul and Jessica and like the Fremen, and it goes on for like 45 minutes, maybe to an hour. And then you have like I want to say like a 15 to pace compared to the the first movie. And well, one of my main complaints, I'll bring it up since I mentioned the Emperor, is I think that um, Christopher Walken definitely feels miscast to me. He's almost distracting, I would say, uh, just because his like line, his iconic line delivery in this case is more distracting than it than like interesting, at least to me. And it's not like the Emperor has like a huge role or anything, but the few lines that he does have. Like when he says like Muadib and like like what? Like <laughs> you almost want to laugh, but like you want the movie to be serious, but your initial reaction is to kind of laugh at the Christopher Walken voice. So I feel like he was miscast, so that that's like definitely like a ding against the movie. And in contrast to that, one of the highlights of the movie is Austin Butler. He is really, really good here. Um, he's, I think he's definitely the highlight of the movie. He's so menacing and just like, like just total, total, like psychopathic, like total, totally insane. And like you, I, he has that quality where I guess the makeup helps too, where you kind of forget who it is and you're, and you just see the character. And I think that really works here. Um, to really sell you his ferocity and like how insane he is and as like Paul's foil it works great um, so after you have like the build-up of the beginning which I think has pacing issues because I feel like it, it, it starts too slow and like you kind of want to get the movie going you definitely feel the length this movie is technically longer but you also feel that it's longer Right? I've seen longer movies that feel shorter, right? But this one you do feel that it's longer. And once things get going, which is like once you start seeing all the stuff in the in Gaty Prime and you see all the stuff with the Emperor and like the dominoes start falling, um the action scenes that follow and like just the whole back half of the film is incredible. Just incredible uh movie making in general. And the like highlights of the film are the like the worms like worm writing like the the epic like skirmishes that are happening as paul's like trying to undermine uh the harkonnens like power on the planet and you have like that political intrigue with the with the emperor one of the one of the things I was missing in the first one, I, I believe they filmed it and they cut it. And it was one of the one of the coolest scenes in the book is there was supposed to be like a banquet scene uh with like other delegate like delegates and like other powerful family members on Dune as soon as the they came into power of being like the dukedom of Arrakis. And that was like a huge like world building scene. And this one mentions the other great houses. Uh, but other than like Lady Lady Fenring played by Leo Sedu and the Emperor, um, you don't see like any other like major player besides like the Harkonnens and, and, and Paul Trades. So I felt like that aspect in terms of making the world feel bigger, the only thing you really have is the Bene Gesserit adding to that. And like the addition of Christopher Walken, in my opinion, for the worst, at least casting wise. Um, and I, th I think uh, Princess Irulan in here, she she's okay. Like she doesn't have like any like real like meat 
to like Florence Pugh, she doesn't have like a lot of meat on the roll to really like flourish or to like kind of like like just like show her acting chops. It's a very it, it's it's pretty grounded, and I think it's pretty true to the character because like the meat of like where she gets kind of interesting, I would say, is in the second book. So this is definitely getting another movie. The ending is accurate to how the book ended. For the most part. And. He. He left it in a way where. I think people are going to be expecting. Another huge action movie. For the third film. And if he does that. I would say that it's. It's already like. Being part of like his adaptation. Because the actual book. Isn't really like that action heavy. In fact. The, the next book happens um, after like a significant time jump and most of the action already happened. So if they make a new movie. I think it would be interesting to see if he adapts it into being like a more action heavy movie. Almost having like that prequel level to it before you get to the, to the stuff that's actually from the book. Or if he's going to be accurate to the book and I feel like people might be disappointed to see that it's not another action movie, but it's almost like a character study about what Paul feels um, after the events of the first movie and the what he calls the Holy War that that he like has visions about because it's after that like happens essentially. So Dune Part Two overall, great great cinematography. And score just like the first one uh, I didn't really notice any like new score uh, moments to be honest the ones that mostly caught my ear were the same ones from the first film uh, you have great acting for the most part highlight Austin Butler worst of the bunch the Emperor played by Christopher Walken um, I think the the love story that that has to happen between uh, Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya of the adaptations that have come out so far I think this is the best one to handle it uh, the David Lynch one for example was just one movie and it felt too rushed and the miniseries was okay I think this one I I feel like the changes they did to Chani's character kind of make it a little bit more interesting um, that they're like falling in love and, and being an item uh, and the action sequences are grandiose, great CGI, no complaints there. Just my main complaints are pacing, some of the casting, and the changes from the book, uh, seeing this as an adaptation. So I feel like the changes, some of them are for the better, specifically in the third act. There's a big change that I think is better in the film than in the, the book. But I feel like some changes are for the worst and it kind of like lowers the the level of world building and, and the scope of what this film could have like as a universal thing. Because I mean, you're talking about an emperor of the known universe, but I feel like these movies just make it feel like the universe is just this planet and the space outside of it and like a couple other buildings and other planets. Um but you f you miss out on like the potential for massive like political intrigue and making the world feel bigger but other than that this movie is really good it's easily going to be one of the best movies of the year i might sound more negative just because of how much i like the ip but i feel like the average person is definitely going to enjoy this film maybe they might be bored in the beginning but after a certain point it's going to have you on the edge of your seat because this is a great film i'm going to give it a 4.5 out of five thank you for watching leave a like let me know down below are you planning on watching this opening night uh did you already see it at the fan first screening like i did uh let me know and thanks for watching